Hi friends, welcome to you. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I am taking up uh, the study of air compressors that is unit 5 of applied thermal engineering air compressors. <coughs> Now, as the name suggests, these are machines, air compressors are machines which compress the atmospheric air. They draw the atmospheric air and compress it. Means, compress means the volume is reduced, volume of the air is reduced and pressure is increased. This is called as uh, the compression. Compression means you reduce the volume and increase the pressure. So, this is what an air compressor does. Now, for an air compressor to do this, we will have to spend some power on it. We have to give some power, then only it can do, do this work. So, when we are giving some power, we should know whether it is useful or not. So, the first thing that comes to, the, comes to us is, what are the uses of this compressed air? Commercial, that is... Uh, uh, technical industrial uses of compressed air industrial uses of compressed air they can ask a question give lift the uses of compressed air there are many uses of compressed air i'll list a few of them here it is used it is used in in spray painting It is, you know, it is used in, you have studied in pneumatics, in all pneumatic devices, all pneumatic devices use compressed air, it may be pneumatic hammer, pneumatic drill, whatever it is, in every uh, pneumatic circuit, you will get, uh, you will use the compressed air, then it is used in mining, mining it is used in sand blasting which is done in for cleaning the castings it is used in supercharging of ic engines supercharging of ic engines it is used in gas turbines It is used in furnaces, all furnaces, all types of furnaces. Like this, you can give a number of uses for compressed air. Now, because we have some uses for compressed air, we don't mind spending some power and compressing the air. So, the one of the theory questions that can be asked is give the uses of compressed air. Usually, it will be for 5 marks you are supposed to write at least five uses of compressed air. Then comes the classification of com air compressors. That is how they are divided, into what types they are divided. Now, air compressors are first classified into two types. They are called, one is called the reciprocating air compressors, reciprocating air compressors and rotary air compressors rotary air compressors reciprocatory air reciprocating air compressors and rotary air compressors then these reciprocating air compressors are further classified into single stage single stage and multi stage now, before we come to this, we have to compare these two. In reciprocating air compressor, you can get lesser quantity of air can be compressed, but to a higher pressure. Here, larger quantity of air is delivered, but at a lower pressure. Uh, <coughs> this runs at lower speed, that runs at higher speed. 
there are this uh, balancing is difficult because there are reciprocating parts here there are no reciprocating parts here only rotating parts are there so it is easier to balance like this we can give some differences between them then there these reciprocating compressors are classified into single stage and multi stage air compressors single stage means the compression that is from the suction pressure to the delivery pressure the it is done in a single cylinder then you call it as single stage compressor if the compression takes place in more than one cylinders that is in part by part in first cylinder you draw the air from the atmosphere to you increase its pressure to a some value then that air enters into the second cylinder where its pressure is further increased then it goes to the third like that if it is more than one cylinder then you call it as multi stage air reciprocating air compressors in multi stage there are some advantages compared to single stage if you do it in multi stage there are some advantages the handling temperatures will be lesser the dimensions of the cylinder will be less lesser the work required to compress them is lesser so these are some of the advantages of multi stage compressor they will ask you that they can ask the working of a single stage multi compressor uh, single stage reciprocating compressor with the help of a the sketch so you will have to draw a sketch it basically consists of a, uh, a cylinder in which there will be a plunger or piston and uh, this will be uh receive this will be reciprocated by a crank and connecting rod mechanism here this is the crankshaft it will be connected to a motor when the motor rotates this even this rotates in a circular this thing this will be moving forward and backward when it is moving ba backward if the inlet valve is open the air is drawn into it in the other half the valves are closed and uh, the here which is uh, taken here gets compressed then you call it as a single stage it can be in this you can have again two types one is called single acting single acting single stage recip uh, reciprocating compressor and double acting uh, single stage reciprocating compressor that is if you admit air and deliver air from one side of the piston only then it is called as single acting single stage reciprocating compressor if you admit the air from both sides alternately that is when delivery is taking place here suction will be taking place here when suction is taking place here delivery will be taking place that side then it is called as double acting uh, reciprocating air compressor so this is some theory that can be asked this this can this from this some theory can be asked and you have to prepare for that i have given a brief description of it you have to make it uh, more this thing you will get some more videos videos on youtube where these things are done with animation animated videos will be there you can see them and learn more about it theoretically now there can be a numerical problem can be also asked here where they will ask us to find out what is the work to be done work required to be done that is how much work is to be supplied work required to be done that is w and power required power required to drive the compressor that is what power motor is to be fixed to run the compressor to do our work now the formula for w if we get w then we get p also if you know what is the work required then you will get what is the power to be given now this work required to be given to a compressor depends upon the law of compression you know we have studied in basic thermodynamics that there are a number of thermodynamic processes so law of it depends upon the law of compression now the law of compression there are three laws by which you can come there are five thermodynamic process we have studied one is 
constant volume process, constant pressure process. These two are ruled out here because if it is constant volume, the volume doesn't change, then there is no compression at all. E then uh, constant pressure, the pressure remains constant. If the pressure remains constant, then no compression is achieved in that. So these two cannot be there. So the remaining, this thing is, one is PV is equal to constant. PV is equal to constant. That is what we call isothermal process. So air can be compressed isothermally or it can be compressed by this process PV to the power of gamma equals constant. It is called adiabatic or isentropically, adiabatically or isentropically. Then third one is PV to the power of N is equal to constant that is polytropically. So you get different formula for W for different this thing. Now if it is isothermal process, if you are cons if you are doing it by isothermal process, then the formula to be used is P1 V1 into log of P2 by P1 to base E. So many kilojoules per stroke or kilonewton meters per stroke. Then second one, in the second case, that is if it is adiabatic, W adiabatic will be uh, gamma minus 1, no, gamma by gamma minus 1, gamma by gamma minus 1 into P1 V1 into P2 by P1 whole to the power of yeah, gamma minus 1 divided by gamma minus 1. So many kilojoules per stroke. If it is the third one that is P polytropic, W polytropic, then this gamma will be replaced by N. So N by N minus 1 into P1 V1. P2 by P1 whole to the power of N minus 1 by N minus 1. So many kilojoules per stroke. This, these three formulae, depending upon on which is the law of compression, he will give you the value of what to be work is work required to be done on the compressor to achieve our this thing. In this, in this P1 stands for suction pressure. In all the formulae, it is the suction pressure. P1 stands for suction pressure in kilopascal or kilonewton per square meters. P2 stands for delivery pressure. Delivery pressure in kilopascals. V1 is volume of air volume of air compressed in one stroke compressed in cubic meters per stroke this will be equal to uh, vs that is stroke volume plus clearance volume or if clearance volume is neglected, clearance volume means the volume at the end of the compression stroke inside the cylinder, it will be very very small compared to the value of uh, the stroke volume. If that is neglected, Vs is stroke volume, stroke volume, this in cubic meters. If it is not given directly, it should be calculated, they will give the dia of the uh, cylinder and stroke length will be given by using this formula. We can calculate the this thing. D is the dia of the cylinder. L is the stroke length. Vc is clearance volume. If clearance volume is not given, it can be neglected. You can neglect it. It will be told that you neglect it in case it is not given. Gamma is ratio of specific heats that is Cp by Cv. For air, its value is 1.4. N is polytropic index. That will be given when they give the law of compression. They will say 
when polytropic process is there they will say according to the law pv to the power of 1.2 equals constant pv to the power of 1.3 constant that polytropic index will be there so you know it so this formula give you the work required to be given to a compressor in order to do our work if this is not given we will neglect this vc will not be there then v1 will be same as vs then power required will be power required to drive the compressor will be p will be given by w that is work to be done per stroke into number of strokes into n divided by 60 into efficiency of the compressor so many kilowatts if it is in case of in case of uh, single acting compressor single acting compressor that means air is drawn from one side of the piston only single acting reciprocating air compressor air compressor p will be equal to if you are drawing the air from both sides w into 2n divided by 60 into efficiency if efficiency is not given it is so many kilowatts in case of double acting single stage reciprocating air compressor if uh, efficiency is not given you can assume it as 1 or you can leave it even it is 1 it can be left 100% efficient if, if that is the meaning so these are the formula for calculating the power so this is all that uh, one problem will definitely come for 6 7 marks on air compressor where you will have to find out these quantities and give it we will we'll work out a few problems in this uh, air compressors 